Why, hi. Well, hello, hello. Well, hello, hello, Beliefings. How's it going? What up? You guys still alive out there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Surviving the corona? I hope so. Where's that the wood to knock on? Beer virus. The beer virus? Yeah. What do you mean? Corona. Oh, that was an awesome joke. Yeah. I can't <laughs> well, how have I never thought your head? Yeah. It was so bad I didn't catch so it. So obvious. I think we're all okay here in the hole. There's, there's no signs of anything. I mean, I'm exhausted. I mean, what better place to not spread a virus than in a damp, dark hole? That's true. <laughs> damp, dark hole <laughs> studio. Uh, I am tired, though. This uh, giant research, which we're going to be covering today, the giant stuff, there was a there was a whole heap of stuff to get into. There yeah. was a lot. It was a thick, thick compendium of articles throughout history. It was a lot. Yeah, so, so I'm sleepy. Giants are real then, huh? <laughs> Well, that yeah. is mm-hmm, argued by some folks, and as we're going to get into as that. As real as dinosaurs? Realer. Oh, see, that, that even <laughs> connects to the, oh, if you want to get real, real weird. And the, the expansion, I'll probably mention that a little bit, but the... Uh, oh, boy. It ties in with the Nephilim. You know, yeah. The Nephilim were the, uh, is one possible explanation for giants in the ancient world. It's one story coming from the, uh, the Right, Hebrew. it's more of a metaphysical idea of the giant. Uh, but what, uh, yeah. Right? Metaphysical, but also physical. You know, they were physical beings. Well, depending, I guess, what interpretation you're taking. But yeah, but that's kind of interesting, John, because there is this, uh, I'd never heard before, but the book of Enoch, which is an ancient Hebrew text, and then the book of uh, Giants. There's a book of Giants, you know that? Found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Scattered from the um, Apocrypha, right? It's like a scattered collection from the Apocrypha. Well, it's, it's fragmented. Fragmented. Because that's yeah, the other the pieces that they found mm-hmm. that remain. But anyways, it goes deeper into the, the story of uh, the book of Enoch and uh, the story of the Nephilim. Right. And obviously there's a lot of controversy around the giant topic in general. And I think one of the reasons why people shut it out is because they, you know, a lot of people, I think half the giant community, uh, go right <laughs> go right to the Nef- Nephilim stuff and <laughs> yeah. right into quoting the Bible. Right. And so it sounds like fantasy to people in that respect. They don't even consider or are unaware of all the historical accounts of yeah. giants found in mounds across the United well, yeah. States. And we're going to get into that initially. I appreciate the people that take the perspective where they can blend the secular and the religious um, belief systems and it, look at those as at least like historical and cultural understandings of these kinds of things where, you know, there's references to these things that are cross-cultural and cross-spiritual, like different religious beliefs, but they all have this connective theme, and some of these are, are cultures and belief systems that were unconnected in, in our history. Right. Uh, so that shines a light on there being some sort of um, reality to this topic that yeah. predates what we understand about these civilizations. So we're getting a little bit of that. And the weird thing that you mentioned, John, about the Nephilim that I didn't get to mention yet, that I was trying to, was when you talk about dinosaurs, and you wondered if they were a connection to those giants. Did you say something about that, John? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember? I know you're working on I said, fixing no, the audio I just, stuff. Yeah, I just said are they as real as dinosaurs? Oh yeah, so that was one of the ideas that because you don't you don't believe in dinosaurs, right? Well, oh come on, let's you not get into all that. I believe on all kinds of things. Please believe and in dinosaurs. No, but the, I, what I like, Chris, to, you can't believe in things just because it makes your childhood fantasies. I'm come not saying true. I don't believe, not in why I believe in dinosaurs. No, yes, I, it is. I believe in dinosaurs because there's plenty of evidence for dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. I don't know about okay. that. Okay, well. I'm not. No, of course I'm not saying I don't believe. In- I want dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I don't believe in dinosaurs. I'm saying uh, I like to look at different theories for dinosaurs, and if and, and I like to challenge all ideas, even if even the the basic existence of a certain thing that we can't that we don't see today, I think is fun to talk about. And I'm open to all ideas, but uh, I like how you jump into this even before we get into. The, I know well, before, it's, before it's the I fun can stuff. before I can establish a basis for a thesis of, of possible giants. This thing that's already hard to believe. Right. Before I can even do that, you start off by saying, well, I don't know about dinosaurs. Well, no, I'm just getting into the fun, okay? okay I, right. what, what I wanted to mention was that in the expansion, we'll probably touch on a little bit in the expansion episode, which is available at patreon.com and our website, believeful.com, uh, is the this crazy idea that some people have out there, which is inter- it's just fun, I guess. But So the Nephilim were basically the, the offspring of the sons of God or angels that came down, disobeyed God, and then mated with the comely women of the earth. The, the comely, comely women. Comely women is how so the opposite of homely? Yes, it's yeah, comely, because you would come on to them because they are, you know, beautiful. Attractive. But anyways, we'll get into this in the expansion, but one of the things that <laughs> a few people have out there, this theory that uh, not only did they mix with the seed of man, and create these monstrous, gigantic offspring with female women, humans, but they also mated with the beasts. Extrapolation is that they created monstrous 
creatures by this combining of their angelic blood with creatures of the earth and created, I don't know, dinosaurs and all sorts of monstrous things that were, we don't see them today. One one theory posits <laughs> because they are wiped out in the great deluge and the gross. flood along with the giants. It is gross, John. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, no, that's just a fun, interesting thing that we might touch on in the expansion. But um, but yeah, Chris, sorry, please go ahead with your... Uh, <laughs> you lost your charger there, buddy. Thanks. I saw this is a video show. You can see how together I am knocking my charger out of my laptop with my foot. Together, you mean clumsily <laughs> crawling through life. <laughs> Thanks, John. That's me. Like a blind hermit navigating a blind swampy lowland. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is great. I'm really building kidding. up my confidence. Pretty accurate joking. description of Jeremy. A blind hermit navigating the swampy lowland of, of life. life. Like it. <laughs> Battling giants as he can. I'm just kidding. I love you. Tilting at windmills. You're actually, a, you're definitely a very Don Quixote kind of guy, tilting at windmills. Like always fighting against things that you see that may or may not actually exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe he, maybe Don Quixote was right. Maybe, maybe he was. Maybe they weren't just windmills. But all the normies and the boomers saw him as windmills. Normies and boomers. <laughs> and the NPCs. Right. <laughs> and the NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, well, before we get into Angel Blood and all this Nephilim stuff, uh, we should definitely talk about the history that's right here below our feet that right. we may or may not have ever heard of. Yeah. It's funny because, like, you know, doing my research into this stuff, the mound builders, like, you can't talk about ancient giants in North America without talking about mound builders. Mm-mm. 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 But it's funny because I remember, like, nope. I have vague memories of learning about the mound builders in Ohio history. Mm-hmm. Growing up, because we're from Ohio, it was so boring. Too. I could well because th- they leave out all the really interesting stuff. The fact that the Native American cultures at the time did not take credit for the mound. They said the mounds were built by people that came long before, and a lot of them have legends of these being giant people. Um, you know, when we started farming in this country, and because we were an agrarian society, which was you know mostly farming, we would be chopping through these mounds and finding these bones of these giant men. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's funny, yeah, we just glaze over the stuff in yeah. class. Obviously, they didn't mention the giant stuff. They didn't want it but to But the stuff that, like, there are thousands of mounds all over the United States, and Ohio was this huge mecca of mounds. They're still out here today. Like, you can look around and see them, but because we never passed, like, a protective act, we just basically bulldozed through them so we could plant crops, things like that. So it's just right. interesting, like, this place looked vastly different 10,000 years ago, or, you know, even more recent. Yeah. Well, it's funny because we live in Ohio and yeah, I didn't know about this, the mystery of the mounds growing up, like even though we learned about it in school. The kind of, snake mound? Yeah, that's one of that's them. That's about the only one you hear about is yeah. the serpent mound. That's serpent a good mound. one. But yeah. there were thousands of those. Those are called effigy mounds. I think there was a, a, a section of Wisconsin where they said it was like from horizon to horizon mm-hmm. were just these really intricate effigy mounds of all these different sorts of animals, even human effigy mounds. But we don't hear about those anymore because they've just been cut through so we could plant corn and shit. Mm-hmm. Right. But the argument is that the bones of giants maybe have been discovered right. underneath the, some of these mounds. And, and that's where we're going to get to into. the creators of this older civilization with higher technology than we give credit for, um, which would disrupt history as we know it in the United States and in man's history. But yeah, it's funny, you know, driving down the road since we live in Ohio, when I first started looking into this stuff, I remember, like, there's places downtown, like off the street on Lafayette, John. But on side roads, they'll see, like, bizarre hills just with trees growing out of them. And that's a sign that they've been there for a long time, obviously. These these mounds that don't make sense. They don't fit the geographical landscape around it. They're just kind of plopped there. Right. You know, and I, my mind always goes to like, is there a giant in there? Right, of course. <laughs> find giant. Like a giant with swords and... He went to Northwest. <laughs> went to Northwest. <laughs> that's our alma mater. <laughs> Gregory the Giant played a mean <laughs> game of basketball. <laughs> Of course, there are mounds, too, that I think you could probably oftentimes are correct when they say, oh, I'm sure that was when farmers were just clearing the land and trying to make, you know, flat fields, then you'd have these mounds at the end of farm fields. Those exist, too, for sure. But it's on record that there were, you know, thousands of these mounds across the country. Right. Well, I do I do want to mention before we get too far into this beginning, as we get into this stuff with the, the current examples of explanations of the mounds, some of these giants that have been discovered, these skeletons. I just want to mention that coming up later in the episode, we are going to be talking about one of the more controversial modern encounters with a large, oh, right. red-haired giant in Afghanistan, known as the Giant of Kandahar. Mm-hmm. So that's that's made its rounds on the internets and the interwebs, and uh, we're going to be recounting that story and going going into some of the background of that and, and corroborating some of the potential information, but also challenging it too, because it is a controversial story. Right. So stick around for that, guys. That'll be later in the episode. But I, but cool. yeah, speaking of the mounds, there, isn't there a famous uh, Abraham Lincoln quote that's also kind of controversial? I like this one. Can I read it? Yeah. Okay. Chris, you give your permission? Absolutely. You, okay. This is from Abraham Lincoln. 
Abraham? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Abraham. I totally don't believe anything you're going to say from here on out. February. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here we go. The eyes of that species of extinct giants whose bones fill the mounds of America have gazed on Niagara as ours do now. Interesting, right? This is a very compelling quote. And that's so this he was looking at Niagara Falls when he, he was giving a, a speech. No, I looked deeper into this. So this this quote is touted a lot as like evidence of giants, or at least Abe Lincoln knew about it. And Abe's belief in giants. And Abe's belief in giants, which very well could have been true because it could go ahead. Because there were plenty of accounts at the time. This is kind of giant fever where you know people were starting to turn up these giant bones of alleged giant people all around the country because we were still, you know, processing the land, quote unquote, for a horrible euphemism. Right. Um go ahead, John. I have a question. <laughs> so when we talk about giants, like what what are we really talking about? As far good as good question, good question. Way to establish that off the bat. Yeah, That's I don't know. Point. Are we talking twelve feet tall? Or are we talking sixty feet tall? Okay, well, so the it's gonna be fun. The giants, the initial giants we're gonna discuss are the ones that are in between seven feet to twelve to fourteen, like one case of eighteen feet in the United States. That's Really so, tall. Say that really again. Eighteen tall. feet is ridiculous. That, and that one is uh, definitely that's a giant. Yeah, but that one is also mm, a little suspect with the story. It's a little fanciful. It's a little like it seems there might be some agenda behind that report specifically. But still, we have accounts of fourteen and fifteen feet, which is still it's ridiculously tall. Which is still more than twice the size well, of you. Are there are there sixty feet tall? Yes. Well, hold on. I'm just going to jump on in. Oh, I know, before you do. Get in, Jerry. We'll get into that stuff later. I wanted to focus more on the... More realistic. Right. Before we go before we go into dinosaur Cause, land. Because 15 feet is still pretty... I mean, yeah. if you had a species of... It's like three Michael Jordans. Right. Yeah. Imagine, imagine those guys walking down the street in, in <laughs> North America. That would be terrifying. <laughs> they just snack on humans. Like, yeah, well, that's plenty of these stories. A lot of references into. are to giants. The, probably the most common are to giants. They'll be referred to as twice or three times size of a normal man. Right. So that would be yeah, about 12, 15 feet tall. 12 to 18 if you consider the three times size. But right. that's, that's a kind of a common description. But yeah, later on in the episode, uh, there will be some fun, and it might even be this more This is pretty interesting. Yeah. I wasn't sure of how, <laughs> you know, because we've been talking about the corona, you know, and like that's right. gripping the world with fear right now. Yeah. But this is fascinating. Yeah, you yes. know what used to grip the world with fear? Giants. Giants, That's yeah. true. It's nice to turn your used to attention. snack on humans. Yeah. Well, for sure. And that's... Uh, like, like little chicken wings. <laughs> the, there have been accounts with supposedly peaceful giants, but the majority of them, and a lot of the consistent themes through different cultures, is is the cons- consumption of, they would eat of pe- humans. People and they'd eat each other. And that was another thing, too, is they were cannibalistic in a lot of these cases. But yeah, I will make the case for giant giants later on in the episode, and definitely in the expansion. Uh, there is some evidence to, to and show also, that. also... Mountains are giants. And yeah, I wasn't even going to touch on this. I want to dig too deep. Whoa, would that be like as a thousands pun, of feet tall? Miles. And that, miles? <laughs> at least two miles. Oh, some, come some, on. In some situations. Uh, Their head was in space? I don't know where, where <laughs> no, does space starts. No, no, no. It's much no, further. No. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously biblical references to the two miles tall. So they just would walk like... From Hello China to America in like a day. Yeah, well, it was a, it was a small well, play, they playground eat? for them. What would they possibly yeah, really? eat? Well, it was a different time. There was giganticism oh, in all dinosaurs. You know, Can the you imagine? Plants and there were giant trees that don't exist. That goes back to the idea of like, there are no trees on the flat earth. Oh you my know, God, we're getting really far crazy. off topic here. <laughs> I get it, I get it. But I, but this idea that there were these massive trees and now we I see the remnants of them. That. Yeah, well, that's going to be in an episode coming up. This always happens. And then you wonder why we're like, oh, we're, this is a two-hour episode. <laughs> well, we'll get it. We'll get into that later on. But yeah, John, to your point, that you guys can look into it. It's called Mud, that's, mud is Fossils. Is that in the expansion episode? No, I don't get into the Mud Fossils. I do get into the, the, some larger reports of these giants and things. But the Mud Fossils and the idea of mountains being old giants that have died and the remnants are now what we see. Like you see faces and cliff sides. A lot of that can be pareidolia. Right, exactly. And you see that because your mind makes out patterns. But uh, some of the arguments are that the old legends and belief systems are true, that there were these giant beings. And, and you can see parallels with like different types of minerals that we have that were made up supposedly by the blood of giants, of you know giant creatures. And, and if you blow some of these things, some of uh, the parts of the human body up, they match certain features we find in landscape and in yeah. rock. And it's so interesting. Again, like it's I've, fascinating. I've seen a lot of that stuff and I, I definitely want to look at more of that stuff but it, to me a lot of it seems like oh this looks like it could be this so it's this well maybe it's you my know? Don Quixote heart probably definitely Tilting windows. but there is there is compelling arguments to it which I don't think you can just like I mean you can laugh at it you can do anything you want but I think some some of them are compelling and there are educated uh, people scientists academics that actually look at it and are interested in the idea so well let's start with the more believable a little more feet on the ground. Oh, idea. so back to the Abraham Lincoln quote. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a little bit of a tangent there. <laughs> okay. So, what was the context of this quote? Chris? Okay. So, the contents. I guess context from context. I guess from what I was able to discern is that 
the quote itself actually came from kind of scribblings of an idea. And I think maybe after he visited Niagara Falls, it wasn't, from what I was able to find, it wasn't that he was standing at Niagara Falls or testifying to Congress about giants or something like that. Oh, well, yeah. Giving a speech at Niagara. Testifying to Congress. Right. So, listeners, you you know, listen to this full quote and tell me what you think. I still think that it definitely could relate to giants, and I'll tell you why some people disagree. Well, specifically, I think it does, but yes, go ahead. John, do you want to read the rest of the quote? This is more of the quote. It's not the entire okay. quote, but... All right, here's the full quote. Full-ish. Full-ish quote. It calls up the indefinite past when Columbus first sought this continent when Christ suffered on the cross, when Moses led Israel through the Red Sea, nay, even when Adam first came from the hand of his maker, then as now, Niagara was roaring here. The eyes of that species of extinct giants, whose bones fill the mounds of America, have gazed on Niagara as ours do now. Contemporary with the whole race of men, and older than the first man, Niagara is strong and fresh today as 10,000 years ago. The mammoth and mastodon, now so long dead, that fragments of their monstrous bones alone testify that they ever lived, have gazed on Niagara. In that long, long time ago, never still for a single moment, never dried, never froze, never slept, never rested. That's a beautiful way to describe Niagara. Right. John, can you guess why people would say that this is not about human giants, judging from the quote you just read. Um, I have a hard time reading and thinking. I know, I totally that. understand that. Especially when it's like not modern verbiage. Right. Yeah, can I can I Go answer? ahead, Jer. Okay, so from listening to it, and I think I've heard this before, that people suggest that he's referring to the mammoth bones. Right. Right. <laughs> right, yeah, it is a blamp blamp. <laughs> uh, but I don't agree with that because he says... The eyes of that species of extinct giants whose bones fill the mounds of America have gazed on Niagara as ours do now. Then he goes on to talk about races of men and older men. Niagara's still strong uh, 10,000 years later. And then he says, and the mammoth and mastodon, now so long dead that their fragments and monstrous bones alone right. testify that they have ever lived, have gazed on Niagara. So why would he mention them twice in different ways? Right. I think he, those are separate ideas. I think, yeah, I think there's absolutely room to argue that he was referring to giant bones of humans. And yeah. Because there were no mastodon bones discovered within these burial mounds. They were human bones. Right. So that alone, I mean, th maybe there was one here and there. I'm not quite sure about that. But it, in large part, there were human skeletons discovered. Like, that's not contested. Known at the time of Lincoln, right? We're in right. discovering these mounds. So it makes sense that he'd be talking about giants. And it would be very redundant of him to say, oh yeah, the races of giants and then, you know, men of old and then also Mastodon, you know, Mastodon right. repeating it again. To re yeah. I mean, I can see the argument for both, but I, when I looked into this, I was expecting to have this debunked for me because mm -hmm. I had heard that argument. But the more I looked into it, the more I realized there's definitely still room to argue with the giant perspective on that. Right. And it's Abraham Lincoln just because, you know, he believes or it may have believed that there were giants and, you know, at the time a lot of people did. It's obviously not evidence. Easier for him to digest that idea. Right. It does go to show the, the belief at the time and the, the amount of evidence that was coming out of these mounds suggesting that people did take this with a lot more credibility than they do now. Right. As time passes and you don't see evidence of it anymore and the Smithsonian berries and poops on stuff, you know. No, we'll get into away. that. Yeah, it's in the Patreon Smithsonian episode. Smithsonian cover-up. We're going to talk about, yeah, the the great Smithsonian cover-up in the Patreon. So if you guys are interested in that, we'll get into the ins and outs. In the expansion episode. Yeah. All right, well, do we have some uh, examples of this, Chris, of these bones yeah. being discovered? Maybe we should take a quick break first. We can take a quick break, and then when we come back, we can get into some of these examples of giants, some examples of giants found. Yeah, I got to take uh, a giant leak. Is <laughs> it John the Giant? Sure <laughs> Pitch shift that down, throw some reverb on there. <laughs> Gary the Giant. It's always Gary. <laughs> Gary is the funniest name ever. It's a pretty good one. It's a very friendly name. That's why Gary Johnson wasn't elected. It also could be a pedophile. Any name could be. be a pedophile, John. Yeah, but Gary. <laughs> Sorry to all the Garys out there. I know, really. You're just really <laughs> slamming on the Garys. Well, Gary can also be your best friend. I think it's a friendly name. Yeah. Have you seen Gary down the street? Do we say it like that? Or if you're like, <laughs> hey, have you met Gary? So it could go yeah. either way. Yeah. You know? like, he's my new best friend. <laughs> Anyways, when we come back, guys, we're going to get hey, into have some... have you seen that weird guy <laughs> Gary walking around here? <laughs> we're going we're to get into some giants, uh, some giant discoveries. Sorry to all the Gares. And we're going to get some traditions of giants and uh, common threads of myth in cross cultures. We're going to get into some Native American, some, some maybe some Aztec, and, uh, and then we're going to get into some more interesting and compelling evidence for the existence of the giant. Don't go away. All right, Gary.
we are back. Welcome back, listeners. Chris, what are we doing now? What are you going to get us into? What, do you, what kind of giant uh, revelations do you have for us? Well, here? I thought it'd be good to start off. I think most of our listeners know that there's plenty of cultures around the world that talk about giants in different forms, one form or another. And I'm not going to get into the specific details of each of these, but I just wanted to list a few uh, from around the world. So you've got the Sumerians, obviously the Anunnaki, which we've discussed before, and which oh, yeah. will play a factor, I think, later on with your Nephilim stuff, right, Jer? Yeah, I remember, I think some of the most common... Ideas that that brings up is that uh, classic engraving. Was it engraving? They show the, the Anunnaki, their rulers, essentially right. the Sumerian rulers, sitting in their throne, and then the Sumerians that are bowing down to them or whatever. But then if you if you actually look at the length of his legs and his torso, and then you you put that together and stand him up vertically, and he's like, what, 15 feet right, tall around or the same height as the ones we've been discussing in North America. Right, so they appear to be giants. Right. You have the Fomorians from Irish mythology, Titans from Greek Oh, and the Titans are interesting too, because similar to the Nephilim, I think it was the Book of Enoch that talks about, it might have been the Book of Giants, talks about how after the deluge and the flood supposedly wiped them out, and the ones that survived, there was a, a 200-year period or something like that where they had to fight against each other, the remaining Nephilim, just like the Titans had the, the Clash of the Titans, that war where they killed each other out. Right, they were the predecessors off. to the Olympian gods. Right. Uh, these these guys are like the, the Jotun. They're from Norse mythology. And the Aztecs had the, and I'm sure I'm going to get this wrong, the... Uh, Quinn and Matson. Mm. Anyway, you can look more into those. I, I wanted to get to the focus of the North American discoveries, so I didn't want to get too deep into the global. Right. We're going to talk about some of the modern uh, actual uncoveries, if you will. Uncoveries, yeah. That's <laughs> a very scientific some, term. Some actual skeletons. Yeah. And yeah, a lot uh, take place in North America. So yeah, let's get into some of those. So that takes us to the traditions of the some of the Native American tribes in North America. There's plenty of these legends of these gigantic peoples that mm -hmm. populate North America from different tribes that many connect to the mounds that are found around the country. Jeremy, do you want to read some of the lore from the Delaware and Sioux tribes? Sure. <clears throat> the oral traditions of the Delaware and the Sioux Indians tell of a race of great stature and who had giants among them and with whom they entered into conflict. The Allegheny River and mountains are named after the Allegawi, but the Iroquois Confederacy drove the giants out of their strong walled cities, and the Sioux finished them off when they attempted to relocate in what is now Minnesota. So, interesting. one story, and this theme repeats throughout Native American lore. That's interesting. This theme of running into and meeting a taller group's subset of human, yeah. which they have to eventually fight. And slay. Right. Usually because they're threatening and because right. they're eating them. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, it's so weird because that's a parallel back to like the Old Testament and the what talks about David and David, you know, the giant slayer, you right. know, and how he had a, a group of what was called um, great men, I think, or something, where they would go around slaying giants, just like the Moabites did. Uh, there's all these references. There's plenty that are of parallel, different biblically. Yeah, you know? biblically, there's plenty it's like of different. You go, you tribes. find giants, you get rid of them, and maybe that's why we don't see them anymore because people killed them off. So one of the, I think the most interesting ones is the Choctaw people. And the tradition of the Choctaws told of a race of giants that once inhabited the state of Tennessee and with whom their ancestors fought when they arrived in Mississippi and their migration from the West. And there's a guy, a really neat guy named Horatio Bardwell Cushman. A neat guy, huh? A neat guy. And in 1899, he published History of the Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Natchez Indians. So he was born around the time period when they were getting removed previous to the Civil War. He went to fight the Civil War, came back, ended up moving next to the Red River and spending like a decade with these Indians and capturing their oral history. And hearing about the giants. And this is from their book. John, if you want to read this, and I was kind of picturing you doing your Sam Elliott sort of accent because it fits the time and locale. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> From those relics of the ages past. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> From those relics of the ages past, an unlimited field for the imagination is open to view, which many thinkers have attempted to explore, only to find themselves utterly lost. So he's right now he's referring to bones and things we're finding around the country, uh, and he's about to quote the lore that he's been told by the Choctaw people. Yet our forefathers came from the West, declare the ancient Choctaws through their tradition, and they saw the mighty beasts of the forest, whose tread shook the earth. But our forefathers' ancestry came from the Northwest beyond the big water. Tis but the tradition of the ignorant Indian, a foolish fable, responded he of the pale face of boasted historical attainments. When, lol. <laughs> when low uh, when laugh out loud accident under, 
When lo, accident unearths the long-hidden monster of traditional record, and the truth of the rejected declaration of the despised Indian is established, and with equal truth, mid all our boasted ancient pedigree, there is more ancient, reaching back through the vista of prehistoric times to the dim and hazy regions of ages past and unknown. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting, too, because the way they say, when lo, accident unearths the long-hidden monster of traditional record, it sounds like something like an earthquake breaks up the land and you find a skeletons. Or like, an accident like when you're clearing a field oh, true, for that's farming. True, yeah. and so what he's talking about there is the Chickasaw people would talk about these beasts that shook the ground, these right. mammoth type like, creatures. And the, the you know, quote, quote unquote civilized folks thought they were rumor and myth because they've never seen anything like that. And then they discover for themselves the bones of the mammoth and the mastodon. So what he's basically saying is oh, like, saying. why do we chalk everything up to myth until we discovered ourselves. We, we basically cast off their ideas. They didn't believe them about the mammoth, the mastodon, these beasts, but then they found bones and then they believe them. And now you're saying they should at least listen to them when they talk about the race of giants that right. existed. Interesting. So, Jay, you want to read this next part? This is in reference to the race of giants that the Choctaw people talked about. Okay. Also, of the tradition of the Choctaws, which told of a race of giants that once inhabited the now state of Tennessee, and with whom their ancestors fought when they arrived in Mississippi in their migration from the West. Their tradition states the Nahulo, or race of giants, was of wonderful stature, but was as their tradition of the Mastodon, so this was also considered to be but a foolish fable, the creature of a wild imagination. When lo, their exhumed bones again, proof of the truth of the Choctaw's tradition. Okay, so then more bones are discovered. I feel like we're reading the Bible right now. <laughs> no, it's that, yeah, that older time period. Yeah, so basically now he's making the connection of the human bones. He's saying now are these giants that they spoke of. You know, again, is this a reoccurring theme where we don't believe it until we find the bones, and right. now we're finding them in the mounds. And this is the account that he had a, had a personal connection with. In the fall of 1880, Mr. William Beverly, an old gentleman, 84 years of age, stated to me that when he was a boy in Tennessee near his father's house on a small creek, were discovered 21 mounds in consecutive order forming a crescent, each distant from the other and rising to an average height of 40 feet. Upon excavation with his father into one of the mounds, human bones of enormous size were found, the femoral bones being five inches longer than the ordinary length, and the jaw bones were so large as to slip over the face of a man with ease. Ew. That's a common theme throughout these reports. Um, this statement was confirmed by Reverend Rudolph of McKinney, Texas, and several others, all men of undoubted veracity, which placed the truth of the former existence of the mounds, their excavations and results, as well as the Choctaw tradition beyond all doubt and even controversy. So obviously, I you doubt it. You see his opinion right. on this stuff. So basically, the Nahulo, the tribe that the Choctaw people talked about. The race of giants. Right, were these people they encountered and we're still living there when they got to Mississippi and then basically they ended up getting into conflict with them because these Nahulo, these race of giants were eating them. Right. So they basically, they got together with some other tribes and forced this race into extinction, in the, at least in this area. That sounds just like the classic story about the red haired giants. Was that right. the Paiute tribe? Yeah. Uh, in the, was that in the Grand Canyon or somewhere in that area? Uh, yes. Then the Southwest. Yes. <laughs> General region. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're getting to next, actually. Oh, that's actually. right. The, the Lovelock Cave, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's the same, that same kind of uh, idea. Basically, we have to take care of this giant threat. Right. Unintended. Yeah. Um, do we have that story? Yeah, that's actually what we're, we're going to talk about next. This is one of the, it's a pretty controversial one, but it is on record that they did find things within this cave down the road. But this is a pretty big story that you'll come across whenever you look into this. Right. It's probably the most giants. popular gi like giant in the Southwest story. And this comes from Richard Dewhurst's book, The Giants Who Ruled America, The Missing Skeletons and the Great Smithsonian Cover-Up. He collected hundreds of articles from the past several centuries discussing the discoveries of these giant humans that lived around the country yeah. and also town histories that had collected all these stories. And it, he was a pretty accomplished guy, right? He worked for the History Channel. And yeah, he's an Emmy Award-winning uh, writer, documentarian. He worked for HBO, PBS. So, you know, intelligent dude. Right. He was looking into this stuff and was really surprised to find— but now he's wacko talking about giants. <laughs> right. Um, so this comes from his book here. The Paiute Indians have a legend about their ancestors and red-haired giants. These giants, known as the Siteka, were a red-haired tribe of cannibals who lived near the Paiutes and often harassed them with constant war and occasionally captured victims to eat. 
Eventually, various Paiute groups had had enough and decided to band together to eradicate the Siteka. Legend has it that the Paiutes cornered the giants and forced them underground into a cave system, piled brush over the entrance, and set it on fire with flaming arrows, extinguishing the Siteka for good. Good riddance. So this was all thought to be a myth until discoveries were made. So in reference to the discoveries, he says, modern historians and anthropologists have dismissed this legend as fantasy and allegorical myth, but others have claimed that archeological finds indicate otherwise. Lovelock Cave first caught the attention of archeologists in 1924, 13 years after miners began harvesting the several foot thick layer of bat guano that had built up on the cave floor. The miners continued to dig until sifting out the ancient relics beneath the top layer of bat guano became too much of a hassle. This is way too much. We gotta stop, guys. They notified the University of California about their finds, and the excavation began. Most of the thousands of non-human artifacts can be found in local museums or at the University of California Museum of Paleontology in Berkeley. But the mysterious bones and mummies are not so easy to come by. The artifacts themselves prove that an advanced culture did indeed predate the Paiute Indians, but whether the legend of red-haired giants is historically accurate remains unknown. What is significant to note is that the scientific community has scrubbed all references to the six to eight foot tall red-haired skeleton men found at the site. And women, there are women too. Recently, it has been confirmed that four of the ancient skulls unearthed at Lovelock Cave are in fact in the possession of the Humboldt Museum in Winnemucca, Nevada. According to Barbara Powell, who is director of the collection, the museum is prohibited by the state of Nevada from putting the skulls on public display because, quote, the state does not recognize their legitimacy. Nobody luck! <laughs> they are instead kept in the storage room and shown to visitors from all over the world only by request. Nothing to see here, people. Move along. In addition, Powell said that the additional bones and artifacts were transferred to the Phoebe A. Hearst Museum of Anthropology in Berkeley, California, where they are kept, but also never put on display so they can hide the truth from everyone. <laughs> yeah, the last bit, but yeah. yeah. That's interesting, because I, I thought I read that about the bones that the, they found at NASCA, but maybe I, I conflated that. Yeah, that's interesting. It seems to be kind of the way it goes. There's, you know, if you take this account seriously and these reports were true, then you have these this conflicting information come to light through artifacts and right. discoveries, and then it gets, you know, it's put away because it's confusing to the public. You know, it doesn't right. fit the ma the mainstream current understanding of our history. So we do, we put it aside to to look at it later. We don't want to confuse the basic idea because people can't be confused. You can't be, you know asked to think about too many things at once. You have to have a straight black and white narrative. Right. And when here's the issue. You have tens of thousands of artifacts from these layers from this cave, right? Skeletons were found. But they're saying, but the skeletons were found aren't genuine. But all these artifacts were there. There would have been bones of some people living in, these, right. in this cave system. But those, uh, we don't have those. We just have these non-genuine ones. So don't look at them. It just yeah. seems a little suspicious. Obviously, it's a contentious subject. Um, you but, can't see the people, but you can see their stuff. Right. I think one of the reasons is because, you know, it predates when there was supposed to be advanced copper working astrological aligning uh, peoples in North America. So they had to kind of hide the evidence. That's sort of the idea, because then you couldn't force your way through and just take over all the land you wanted, because there was nothing here but, you know, basically, according to the Smithsonian guy who began the Smithsonian, worked for the Smithsonian Institute, called these tribes not far from, you know, involved apes, Savages. basically. Yeah, like... Yeah, that's one argument. Yeah, Manifest Destiny is more acceptable if everyone that lived here before was a primitive... Like, right. There was no advanced technology, no races of people that may have a history there. Right, but again, you know, the Paiute Indians talk about this race of giants that their tribe battled several great-grandfathers back and they carry down the story and then what do we find in that cave? Evidence of a civilization we thought didn't exist before the Paiute Indians. Now right. we know it was there, but, you know, well, we, yeah. we're going to throw away the other thing. That's how mythologies you know? grow too is you have people all over the earth telling about their stories about how they came to be, how their civilization came to be, these giants that gave them knowledge or built these structures and as that that belief and understanding th their truth gets passed down it becomes mythology when quote civilized people come in and say this can't be real we've never seen them that's myth you know and that happens everywhere right and before we go to your part Jer, your section where you get into the the contemporary story of the giant of Kandahar in Afghanistan and the military battle <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. on there before we get into that I just wanted to read two quick um, news accounts 
of giant bones being discovered. Because yeah, there are hundreds, right? Hundreds of accounts. In yeah, there. and I'll link to the book. You guys can check it out. But there is, I mean, it's a great resource. It's It's got almost every story you could find. And these are all around the turn of the century, right? Right. Um, so the first story, Jerry, do you want to go with the first one here? All right. It's titled, Skeletons Find Giant Skeleton. Oh, what? wait. No, no, no. <laughs> what that would be, is that? That would be impressive. Uh, scientist. <laughs> skeleton finds giant skeleton. No longer alone. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Friends! I have friends. All right. Scientists find giant skeleton. In life, they average 12 feet high. This comes from the Monroe County Mail, June 18th, 1914. Skeletons of a race of giants who averaged 12 feet in height were found by workmen engaged on a drainage project in Crowville. Hey, get a load of this tall bastard! There are several score at least of the skeletons, and they lie in various positions. It is believed that they were killed in a prehistoric fight, and that the bodies lay where they fell until it covered with alluvial deposits due to the flooding of the Mississippi River. No weapons of any sort were found at the site, and it is believed that the Titans must have struggled with wooden clubs. The skulls are in a perfect state of preservation, and some of the jawbones are large enough to surround a baby's body. That's a creepy visual. Ugh. <laughs> why would you put those two together? Giant jaws and baby's body. Almost like they were known to be man-eaters. Right. right. Well, maybe the local newspaper reporter knew the oh, yeah, legends yeah. at the time. And who knows, maybe just making it all up. But that's the thing, there's so many of these where there were, there were reputable people involved in these accounts. Yeah. But I thought that was a good kind of a good average one that talks about these that's a tall person 14 feet as we talked about earlier yeah. what's the tallest person ever recorded uh it would change depending on the the decade the century yeah but like ever I think recorded like around like say 12 or 13 feet no no, no not way. That high. i would eight say feet? maybe maybe nine feet yeah eight something i think let's is, look it up there's a guy in afghanistan i know a man who <laughs> we could ask his <laughs> name is mr google mr google there's a man in Afghanistan who was in the news, oh, what was it like the last four years? He was put in a police van, van for something. He was turned away at some sporting event or some, some strange thing. Because it was a giant he was eating people? No, no. He was, only, he was like eight foot something. You're right. The tallest man, John, ever, ever recorded. Eight in, foot, 11 inches. Yep. And his name was Robert Pershing Waldo. Wadlo. Well, that's not the guy I was talking about. There was a more recent Afghanistan guy who's eight something. Obviously. Yeah. But, you know, when we talk about giants that are seven to nine feet. Obviously, there are, there are aberrations. There are people that through agromentally... Yeah, but this is a spe- like a whole race. Exactly. When you have a, a multitude of people that average seven to nine feet, that's a race of these larger people. Right. It's not just one... Right, and, and exactly. And it's crazy when you hear the word 11, 12 feet. Okay, well, in my mind, I'm not a big numbers guy, as you guys might know. Um, so it's hard for me to visualize what that would be. But you look at a picture of this guy, Pershing Wadlow, mm-hmm. and him next to his sister and mother, and he's twice the size when you actually physically see that and then you imagine people that are another three feet on top of that it really is like an entirely new race of creatures yeah it's not just like an abnormally tall you'd be person. like up to their knee yeah you're like looking like a a third story no. window not knee well if they were oh, maybe yeah if they Depending were on how tall you yeah. were 14 feet yeah maybe like, more of their waist if you were like six foot tall if you're six foot and they were 12 foot but yeah if you have 15 footers you know or even counts of 18 footers then obviously you know, and well, well, yeah, th- 18 feet is a whole another ball game. That would be terrifying. Yes. On the higher end of the average American height is 5'10. Right. So 5'10, you double that, you know, a oh. little over 11 feet. <laughs> it's so crazy. So imagine double the average person, then add another four to five feet on top of that. Right. Yeah. Crazy. I'm just looking at this picture of Robert Waldlow with his family and his mom. She's at right. his hip. Exactly. Like literally a whole other person on top. Right. Of so her. then add another four feet. Right. Like yeah. That is that is a monster. It's yeah. Like literal monster. I think that would hurt their feelings to say that, but well, some of them were monsters. They'd probably frankly. eat us anyways if they were here. Some of them would, <laughs> wouldn't you? All right. So we have another account here from the uh, the beaches of Texas. Yeah, John. I thought you could read this one since you've spent the most time in Texas out of the three of us. Okay. So you, so you have the credit, <laughs> the authority <laughs> to read. Street cred. So you can say whether or not the story is accurate. Giant on the beach in Texas. And this comes from Richard Dewhurst's book. In 1931, the San Antonio Express announced that a Federal Works Progress Administration archaeological team digging in association with the University of Texas discovered what at that time was called the largest human skull found in the world in Victoria County, Texas. And its owner was dubbed the Giant on the Beach. Photographs revealed that this skull was twice the size of the skulls of a normal man. This find was held at the University of Texas, where Dr. Alice Hydraulica of the Smiths is that right? Close enough. Of the Smithsonian examined it and related discoveries. 
And in a joint press release, it was said that these finds in Texas are beginning to give weight to the theory that man lived in Texas 40,000 to 45,000 years ago. What's fascinating about all of this is oh, that... wait, sorry, that's just a thought I I'm had. going to read it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> What's fascinating about all of this is that if, if true, it points to not only a lost advanced civilization in the Americas, but a civilization that was potentially not homo sapien. In the expansion, we discuss common okay, okay. <laughs> abnormalities having... Okay. So, yeah, that last... Find out in the expansion. Right, that last bit obviously being like my thought on this whole topic. I just read the inside of Chris... Chris's thoughts. Right. I know. So that is what's fascinating about it. Gosh darn it. Yeah, that these it is a parallel species to man. Right. And that would have existed long before we thought civilized man or or uh, I guess intelligent bipedal beings walk the earth had so civilization. So are these descendants from the Nephilim? So that's where we're gonna get into the expansion. That's one theory. That's a, well it's one belief system. Uh, uh yeah, like they could have been I mean it kind of makes sense if there really was a race of them. Right. Like it does seem like they what happened to them though? Yeah. Well, the flood was supposedly what happened, and that that how uh, come the little ones survived? Well, some survived because even in in different accounts, different <laughs> the little ones, even like the fourteen footers, <laughs> yeah. even like us, the baby oh. ones, <laughs> we survived. Well, that's the thing is, yeah, we're like cockroaches. In, in different traditions, I think it's the uh, uh, the Pawnee. Uh, there's a tradition of the flood and the the giants that were washed out. But in a lot of these traditions, you have basically the great sky spirit or the creator or God going to a certain person or a group of people and saying, here's how you are to be saved while the rest is washed out and partially due to these giants that were mm. corrupting the earth and eating people yeah, and each other. Yeah, I think they probably got out of control with their big appetites. And That's what it sounds like. It's interesting. That is a uh, a theme that runs throughout cultures mm-hmm. across oceans is that idea of like they basically got too big for their giant britches and then had to get shut down by the guys up top. Right. Who's um, the guys up top? God? It depends on the culture at the time. Sky sky spirit. Depends God, on which which culture you're creator. referring to. Yeah, but you're Yahweh. talking about a like a power like not human. Right? right, right. Not human forces. Yeah, not the like CIA. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta um, shut the giants well, probably down. Had hand in it. There's also an idea of disease. Um Dewhurst talks about that mm-hmm. in his book. And then even you go far as back as the guy Cushman who'd studied the Choctaw people, he was in correspondence with someone at the same time period who was discussing, looking at these bones and how there was this growing consensus that there had been some disease that you could tell in the decomposition of these bones. There had been a really deadly disease that had... So who, coronavirus. Who knows? <laughs> right, coronavirus. Yeah. Ancient. It's reawakened. Um, well, we're going to get into the expansion. Um, we're going to talk more about the Smithsonian cover-up, right? Right. Some of those ideas. Uh, one interesting news article that you didn't have in here, but it's in his book as well, um, Dewhurst's book, uh, is called Ancient Burial Ground at Black Creek, and this comes from 1953. And it says... Along the Susquehanna River in Indiana County, Pennsylvania, a major Indian burial site was uncovered. Altogether, 49 skeletons were exhumed, the tallest being 8 feet tall. These skeletons were reportedly taken to the Harrisburg Museum for reassembly and then shipped to the Smithsonian for further study. And here's the key. However, the Smithsonian denies any knowledge of them. So that's right. kind of this theme that goes on. Like there, in order to get credibility and get your discovery verified, you'd send it to the Smithsonian, or agents from the Smithsonian would come and look at it, take it away, to get that verification. But then you run the risk of them not returning it, or accidentally losing it, or whatever that would happen. They would, and you'd lose track of that discovery. Right. And why would there be a cover? We'll, we'll get into all this stuff in the in the Patreon episode, the expansion. Yeah. But let's take a break, and when we come back, Jerry, you're going to get into the the giant. Of Kandahar. Right. Yes. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, this is the story that, that's been going around the internet since, uh, I think, 2017 and, and probably earlier, honestly, of this giant that was encountered by a uh, patrol of U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan in their ensuing battle and then recovery of the body. So that's coming up after the break. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome indeed. So stick around, guys. We'll see you in a minute. Hey guys, we're back. Welcome back. Guys and gals, sorry. I hope you had a 
giant of a good time on your break. That was, that was not good at yeah. all. I'll cut that out. I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything <laughs> oh, I'm not cutting that out. A giant of a good break. <laughs> it's awful. The dad joke. Welcome back, guys. We're going to be getting into something I wanted to cover for a long time on the show, which is the giant of Kandahar. Now, as I mentioned before the break, this takes place in Afghanistan in an area called Kandahar. It's actually, I think, a city in, in Afghanistan, but this takes place in the area around that. And this has come to prominence on the internet and passed around, you know, conspiracy, cryptid, esoteric circles online, primarily from Ellie Marzuli and Steve Quayle. I think you, you know. Oh, you good old Steve Quayle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what interested me the most, because this, you know, it could just be another story, and it could be, but Ellie Marzuli has an actual video that we'll link in the show notes, which is an interview with a, a supposed special forces Marine talking about his experience with this giant and what he encountered. That's pretty interesting because I've heard this story before and, you know, it's one of these where like anonymous witnesses, right. it's like, come on, really? But watching the video is interesting because you get a sense of genuineness from this guy, even though his voice you know, is pitch shifted, right. he's blurred out, he's anonymous. But uh, but he still, you can hear him tell the story with, you know, enthusiasm. Um, and, and obviously he was an infantry guy. You can tell by the verbiage, by the technical things that he's including in his account. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to read a breakdown of that story here, and we'll link the source of this breakdown in our show notes as well. And I think it comes from exonews.org, but there's all kinds of uh, breakdowns of the story. But listening to the guy's actual account, this is the closest I could find to his actual report. So... Chris, if you want to start us off, you can begin the story of the giant of Kandahar. In 2002, a U.S. patrol had gone missing in a very remote area of Afghanistan. Another patrol was dispatched on a search and rescue mission, and one soldier on that patrol described what he saw after coming around the side of a mountain. As we bent around this corner, you could see the opening of the cave, and then I see a lot of rocks, which is another oddity, and then bone matter. I'm not close enough to identify what kind of bones, but I did see what I knew to be a piece of our communications equipment. So instantly we're thinking ambush, maybe animal, you know, could be anything. The front of the cave had a sheer drop off, but there was enough room that we got into a decent dispersal in case of ambush. Not long after they had gotten into that dispersal formation, they saw something emerge from the cave that, despite their preparedness, caught them fully off guard. It was a man, at least 12 to 15 feet in height. This is a monster. Red beard, his hair was longish, past his shoulders, a scarlet red. And Dan runs at him and starts shooting, which broke all of us into the reality because it was surreal. While Dan is moving at him, another bro of mine is laying down fire and I start firing. He skewers Dan, he's now got him on this pike. It went through him. He's got him and he's coming after more. We all just clicked in. I don't know what it was, but I remember we were all like, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. He's taking multiple hits and he's still moving. Eventually the giant was killed. Dan had been killed as well. And the patrol unit was soon visited by a helicopter that dropped some cargo netting. They were told that they had to bundle up the giant in the netting and soon after, they were done. A larger helicopter came by, dropped a hook, and the giant was carried off. The soldier confirmed that the red-haired, fair-skinned giant had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. After they had submitted their after-action report, the soldier recounts that they were told by their top brass to rewrite it in a particular fashion, presumably to remove any mention of a giant being. So pretty fantastic sounding. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and there's a, there's more detail in the actual interview that we'll link in the show notes, but that's kind of the crux of it. Right, and it is interesting to hear the guy's emotion when he's having this interview. Right. Yeah, you can you can he- hear what sounds like a genuine emotional response. I don't. I mean, out of all the things we talk about, I feel like this is less fantastical. Oh, you mean like overall, like just like normal stuff? Yeah, I mean, it seems more possible than you know. Right. Yeah, like a parallel race of humanoid species. And it's humanoid. It's just. You know, giant. Yeah, I think that what makes it hard to believe for a lot of people is just that you don't see them out. You know, well, they're at hidden, the grocery store. hidden in in caves in Afghanistan. Right, that's right. the argument. <laughs> <laughs> they don't grocery shop in Ohio. Right. They, yeah, they, <laughs> they Uber Ohio. or they order DoorDash and Grubhub to get yeah. their yummy yums. They're one of those weird people that order and say, "Please leave it on the doorstep." I mean, it would make yeah. sense out of anywhere that you would run into them in some hidden remote location away from human activity. Yeah. Same with the reptilians; they're probably friends. Yeah. In, in the, <laughs> in the big Bigfoot. Feet. Well, and we in talk big about feet. this this <laughs> parallel with the caves. It's always these cave systems, tunnels underground yeah. where they can hide. What is down there? Well, giants apparently, red-haired giants and ant people. Everything that we can't see and yeah. we can't prove is under the ground. Think about how much 
area there is under the ground. Yeah. It's like a multiple earths. Well, right. We covered that one on the inner earth episode. We talked about the expansive caverns that are, you know, there was more sky in these caverns than there are from our surface level. That's to, crazy. Yeah. Outer atmosphere. And now thinking about what's coming up too, we're going to have a, a little piece here about our involvement in Afghanistan as the military, some of the actions we've done. And some people suggest that it was not so much a war against terrorism as much as it was a war against the giants. giants. <laughs> right. Here. So uh, there's an interesting uh, kind of conspiracy coming up about that. But uh, so here's a bit of corroborating testimony. This also came, I think, from Steve Quayle. <laughs> Thanks, John. All righty. Uh, okay, so corroborating testimony. So I think it was not long after uh, another eyewitness came out, and this was separate from the original eyewitness. And uh, I'm not even sure if he was aware of the original story, but allegedly this came from a I'm not sure if it was Steve Quayle or L.A. Marzulia, but those are the go-to Steve guys. Steve Quayle, <laughs> right? Or him, but he's the Genesis Six guy, and that's where the Nephilim comes from. All this right, stuff. Right, so, right. Lot, so they're bringing this forward, and obviously they're tying it back. There's to There's giants, Alex. They're all in the caves <laughs> waiting, <laughs> waiting to Steve take Quayle? over. I mean, he says stuff like that well, all the time. Well, apparently that's what we're digging into. Yeah, it is possible. Okay, so <laughs> so this also comes from that website uh, that we'll be linking in the show notes. Although not an eyewitness, another special ops officer in Afghanistan provides the following corroborating testimony. Quote, We would come back to the base and started hearing this rumor about a unit that killed this, what they started calling this really tall person. At first, I didn't think anything of it, then come to find that the person they killed was actually three times the size of a man had extra digits on their hands and extra digits on their feet, and had red hair, and a special unit had come in and wanted this target. Well, we heard that they killed this thing inside a cave, or the mouth of a cave, and it was common knowledge among the military to hear this. When you first hear, you're thinking like, yes, this has to be a joke. This has got to be a hoax. Then after things go down in a certain way, you, and you keep hearing it, you start to realize it's not a joke. So that was another... At least uh, someone who had heard about it while he was in the military. Over, overseas, right. Yeah. Starting to think this whole coronavirus thing is a cover up for giants. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> think the truth is on the edge of coming out and they're just like, unleash it. <laughs> exactly. The uh well the thing about like the the six fingers right. and the you know six six six. Six sure that six, uh, six six six. The accounts of giants in North America that we covered, and we're gonna get into that in the Patreon episode, but these aberrations, these monstrous aberrations of the bone, some skulls with horns, some skulls with a lot of them two rows of teeth. Two right? rows of teeth, a lot of them two rows of teeth. Um and then the red hair is common. Even when the even when everything else is sort of normal, the, the reddish so hair is scary. Reddish Viking like creatures with two, two rows, rows of, of teeth, teeth, 16 feet tall. Extra thingies. Can you imagine? Dude, mm -hmm. can you imagine? <laughs> like that Wald, Waldor guy? Yeah. I mean, that guy is enormous. And then like five or six feet tall. Oh, like, yeah, mind blowing. They probably are fully agile. Yeah. And can skewer people. It would on be their like those. Pikes. Be like those bad guys in the BFG, the big friendly giant, like the original animated one, those evil giants that uh, would come and like pick children from their bedroom windows at night and go eat them up. Yeah, That's so how tall these, I mean, like, you know, monstrous. I mean, you don't need ones to be, you know, you talk about yes earlier, right. like what a 60 feet tall. You don't even need ones. It just 15 feet is terrifying. Right. I mean, yeah. It's like, t especially if they're, level. you know, because human beings that are like 10, you know, the tallest man in the world was eight foot 11. Right. He's probably not super. Agile? Right, because usually it's a gigantism or there's some sort of a Right, it's, it's like a malfunction. But if you're built to be that tall, imagine how scary you would well, be. Well, and that's the thing. With these accounts, they were proportional. Like in the Native right. American accounts, they weren't just tall. They were, because Native Americans had experienced gigantism in their, uh, I'm pretty sure, in their <laughs> one form sure. or another. <laughs> but they realized that the, uh, these creatures, as abnormally tall as they were, they were uniformly correctly developed right. as right. far as a, a normal looking. So they were fast and scary. Terrifying. Yeah. They didn't just lumber. No, they no. were agile, well built, well yeah, developed. Were, yeah, fighting they were monsters and intelligent. Excellent basketball and players. The stories were that they were a higher advanced civilization, not like flying cars, but like worked with copper. Were able to to build structures that were aligned to the stars. All these other things that we were discovering. Why don't we in these see mounds. their like massive homes then left over? They we do. A lot of them bulldozed. Eighty percent of the mounds, and that, that's the thing. These mounds weren't just filled with dead giants. Allegedly, they were also filled with treasures, with um, Cabins. things they had created, stone structures. How big was the door? <laughs> that's a good question. I'm not quite sure. You have that information on you, Chris. <laughs> was it like 20 feet? Well, there's plenty around, like the uh, South America, especially. A lot of these temples where the the doorways are, you know, like 20 feet oh, high. Petra, Petra was supposed. Imagine to how many head bonks people. they get from walking around. Dunk. <laughs> oh, me well, oh they my. also lived in caves, right? Like we talked about. There's some very large caves, and uh, one cave in particular. This ties back into what we were just talking about in Afghanistan. 
the kind of conspiracy I wanted to get into. John, play that clip. This is a clip from um, exercise in Afghanistan when we were doing cave clearing, which was the bombing of caves to get rid of uh, uh, Taliban terrorists, ISIS, what have you, the terrorist threat in these caves. Uh, but this is an example of what it, what it was like at they the time. They got a little more than they bargained for. <laughs> That's right. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Pull this in the show notes, too, so you can see what it was like. That was a big explosion. Inside of a cave. Oh, they're cave blowing right mm-hmm. now? Cave clearing. What we're doing right now is we're sweeping through the area and we're destroying the caves. We're gathering any kind of caches. Giants don't like Or that. Uh, any kind of intelligence Mm-mm. that we can use to help uh, uh, in the war against terrorism. And if we run across them, uh, we're able to uh, engage them and destroy the, uh, the Taliban. The giants. Anyway, so I know that's a pretty out there How's theory. It? Yeah, it's just basically giving. I thought you a, a giant was going to run yeah. out of the caves. <laughs> you, have, okay. you have here in the small, in the in the like in parentheses, hunt for terrorists, blowing up caves, piss off giant? Question mark. Well, that's play clip. Where's the giant? <laughs> I mean, I do understand giants would get pissed if they were living in the cave, right? Anything, and they, and they would were... skewer people if they got a hold of yeah, them. Yeah, if you had more of these people coming up later, and then you knew that there, you knew that other people like this had blown up other caves. All that was showing was that we were clearing caves. Well, okay, but just it put you in that environment for a minute that we were doing that. You could mm-hmm. and, uh, saying how it was like a, oh, a, a systematic thing we were doing, going through and clearing the caves. Man, though, look, just seeing the that location, though, it's just so in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, dude, these giant caves. Like, that's where like, you would live if you were in a giant. You would live in those cave systems. And exactly. And you would snack on Afghani military people. And goats and all sorts and of things. And sometimes, occasionally, the U.S., when they would go in the caves. Adventure too close. All right, so here is uh, what I wanted to bring to the attention. This has been around the internet, too, this concept of the, uh, the odd coincidence of... The drum we bopped, the biggest non-nuclear. The drum we bop. <laughs> the drum we bopped. The bomb we dropped. Okay, uh, I've heard about this. Have you guys heard of the Moab, John? You must have heard of this. Yeah. Okay. So the Moab, mother of all bombs. The mother of all bombs. The U.S. military dropped the largest non-nuclear bomb in its arsenal at the time on ISIS, the Islamic State tunnel complex in Afghanistan. Now that detonates just like about six feet above the ground, but it creates like a mile blast radius. Really? Yeah, it's gigantic. Jeez, that's crazy. So here's a little quote I'll read. No collateral damage there. I'll look one up. On April 13, 2017, the Air Force deployed a so-called massive ordnance air blast bomb known as the mother of all bombs, or MOAB for short. It was dropped on an ISIS Khorasan cave complex in Akin District, Nagahar Province, Afghanistan. I probably pronounced all that wrong. The mission was said to have targeted an ISIS tunnel network and personnel near the border with Pakistan. MOAB is the largest non-nuclear bomb and is valued primarily for its ability upon detonation to penetrate deep into the Earth's surface, where giants would live. (laughs) According to an article from the Global Research Center for Research on Globalization, such bombs are able to break through 200 feet of reinforced concrete. Oh, wow. Yeah, now this is where it gets weird, okay? This is the kind of conspiracy, John. So in the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible refers to a tribe descended from Moab, son of Lot, who battled giants called Emim. Quote, the Emim lived there formerly, a people as great, numerous, and tall as the Anakim. Like the Anakim, they are also regarded as Nephiim, Hebrew for giants. But the Moabites called them Emim. The Horites formerly lived in Ser, but the sons of Esau, or Moabites, disposed them and destroyed them from before them and settled in their place. So essentially, The Moabites, or descendants of Moab, destroyed the giants in the land in which the Moabites wanted to settle. Fast forward to 2017, the U.S. military drops a bomb called Moab to destroy a massive cave system in Afghanistan, (laughs) the same region where U.S. soldiers allegedly fought and killed a red-haired giant living in a cave previously in 2002. Yeah, that's a pretty pretty interesting coincidence. Right. I mean, obviously. Again, or did, you know, was the story uh, fabricated because of that biblical reference? And then there's the thing. Uh... This story, supposedly it happened in 2002, right? And we dropped the bomb in 2000, April 2017. But then again, yeah, more of the story could have been added on. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like the original account of this this giant attack right? Uh, when they attacked the unit yeah, that happened before we dropped the Moab bomb. Right, the story's been around longer than okay. before we dropped the that bomb makes a little on, more on the tunnels and the cave systems. But um, so then a lot of people, yeah, obviously will say, yeah, it's, you know, it's obviously... Obviously, the war on terror is really a war on giants and we're destroying their cave system so the Nephilim can't return and, you know, eat the people of Earth. That's one <laughs> idea. Um, but uh, it's just an interesting connection, you know, yeah. that tie-in. Okay, so 
of course, looking this up online, you're going to find top result is going to be from uh, Snopes. Snopes or Nopes, as we like to call it. So this is what Nopes, <laughs> this is what Nopes or Snopes says. Uh, it's false. Uh, they say in the summer of 2016, several personalities and websites dedicated to discussing supernatural myths and conspiracy theories began claiming that an American special forces soldier serving in Kandahar, Afghanistan, was killed in 2002 by a 1,100 pound blade wielding 12 foot tall giant from Old Testament times before the <laughs> giant himself was taken down by the military. So, of course, they're talking about Ellie Marzuli, Stephen Quayle. Right. Um, but a couple of inaccuracies, obviously, off the bat. One is that it's a blade wielding, you know, yeah. but it was a pike. That it wasn't actually a blade. A pikey? It was a pike. Pikey. Uh, and then they referred. Well, there's to, a blade on the end of a pike. Right. Right. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. But. Or is it just a sharp other, and sharp and stick? Right. But the main thing was just the way it was phrased. Like obviously not take. Well, why would you take it seriously? I guess from this point right, of view. Right. But a uh, giant from Old Testament times. Right. Like what is it? Did it survive from Old Testament times? It's that old. Like it's the same one. Right. They're just putting that in there because it's from Bible people. Well, that, this goes back to the the whole issue with giants in North America and how you know upcoming scientists of the day they were getting more towards materialistic sort of view and, and less supernatural, less spiritual. So anytime someone mentioned giants, they're like, oh, that was in the Bible. Uh, let's not talk about that because some people might think, oh, it gives credibility to uh, this or that religion. Right. So they wouldn't even want to look at the the scientific evidence to say, you know, that there might have been a subset or a separate species exactly. of mankind, which we have, which we've seen before, which we've discovered, like Homo florensis, that the Hobbit we discovered, right? Mm-hmm. It's a, a totally different species of Homo yada yada, you know, the, <laughs> Homo yada yada. The, but it, it correlates to these stories and tales and myths of these tiny people that lived the alongside us. Hobbits, yeah. Now we know that there was a race of tiny little people that lived alongside us, at least in certain parts of the right. world. So why not giants? Exactly. Well, Snopes put the death nail in the coffin, or the, is that what they call it, the death nail? Sure. The final nail in the coffin of uh, this story because they said they reached out to the Department of Defense and a spokesperson told them that they have no record of such an incident. No way. They said, quote, we do not have any record or information about a special forces member killed by a giant in Kandahar. <laughs> so, end well, of story. Of course not. Yeah. That's, that's hilarious. Reminds me when I was talking to someone recently and they were like, oh, you're, I heard your episode on the moon landing and uh, and then the next day we talked about it and then the next day she texted me in the morning she's like, uh, according to the internet, these astronauts went to the moon. So what are you talking about? Yeah. Right. I was like, well, that it doesn't, I mean, I'm not yeah. saying that, you know, it's obviously, you look at the information, but. The official report is always going right. to be some, you know, exactly. Obviously. So when the defense department says we don't have a record of that. If a giant skewered Dan in the hills of Kandahar, do you think they're going to be like, oh, thanks for asking. You know what? That did happen. Yeah, here's we the real giants account. in caves. We yeah. forgot to tell the times. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Right. It is interesting the connection with red hair because then in the U.S. you have the red hair giant, the oh, yeah. skulls found with red hair still attached, the mm-hmm. elongated skulls. We'll get some of that in the expansion, but yeah, it's an interesting story. And they did say that uh, there was a Daniel who died in Kandahar in 2002, but they said that he died along with, this is from Snopes and they looked it up or contacted him. He died along three others who were involved in an incident clearing and disposing of explosives. Oh. So, which is, yeah, but of course it could be, that's that's how they reported his death to his family and if they were going to cover it up. I mean, it's, the problem with these these websites and or it could be true the professional skeptic yeah but the professional skeptics where they their evidence is the word of authority right it's not there's no evidence like from other sources it's just this is what they told us you know so I, that's I take I take issue right and obviously like these stories are coming from anonymous reports so right. obviously the same side for people who are arguing absolutely this is a giant right it's the same sort of like you don't really know but it's the story that makes it interesting the possibility is still there yeah well I think guys uh, that. It's going to about do it for this episode. In the expansion, we're going to actually play a second part. You're going to hear uh, the voice of a military officer who's actually involved in firsthand account with that supposed giant. Uh, and that's going to be coming up in the expansion of part two. We're also going to talk a little bit of uh, some corroborating mythology that the Afghans have. They've known about giants for a long time. And John, to your, to your question, uh, monstrously tall. They believe that giants live their uh, recent generational memory of up to like a hundred feet or so. What? Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be coming up. We're going to be getting a little bit in the Nephilim and the uh, and some evidence from our good friend Klaus Donna, <laughs> wow. a great researcher who has uh, looked into giants, all kind of uh, bizarre artifacts and unexplained. Definitely a controversial items figure around the world. He's a famous beatboxer too, isn't he? He is. He's very good <laughs> at it. Yeah, we'll be playing a clip of his recent album too. Oh, that's great. Uh, and also, if we have time for it. Touch a little more on the Smithsonian cover-up we mentioned in this episode and the monstrous aberrations, the, the strange things about the North American giants that were discovered, like the accounts of horned skulls and double right. rows of teeth. If we have time, we'll see. There's going to be a lot. We're going to be peppering yeah. a lot in the expansion. And if you guys haven't signed up yet, go to patreon.com and uh, sign up there or go to bleephole.com and click on the 
Patreon button and sign up to be an expansion level patron of ours and you will get a bonus episode uh, fully packed just like our regular episodes every time we drop a regular release along with some bonus content, some old episodes and some off the cuffs we do from time to time. Patrons help keep us doing the show as we try to fight to get some advertising so that we can keep doing it. It's, Sustain it's, ourselves. It's nice to have you know our patron base to at least pay for all the basic expenses. of the, Exactly. Yeah, you guys keep the lights on in the hole. And without you... It'd speaks, be a dark hole. It would be a dark hole. <laughs> yeah. and it would be a dark time. It needs to get brighter, though. Yeah, I'm feeling it. So you guys stay safe out there. And yeah, on the way out of this episode... Uh, don't we have a recording oh, yeah. of the space guys from last episode as they're watching? Aren't they uh, observing your neighbors? <laughs> Is yeah, that what's going on? Neighbor watching. Neighbor watching in yeah, a cloaked we, vehicle. Yeah. In our last episode, we had a stinger for Alfonso that we kind of created these characters. So uh, we think it's pretty funny, and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna keep doing them. So yeah, and we're gonna. If you guys haven't heard your stinger yet, stay tuned because we're gonna be catching up on those as well. So <laughs> someday. All right. All right, guys. Thanks Cheers a lot. and peace to. To you all. Love be with Giants you. forever. Giants Giant forever. forever. Human observation. Neighbor activity. Entry zero zero one. Look at this guy. They're out in the yard, like moving stuff around all the time. This is what they do. I guess could go over here. <laughs> They're like, maybe I'll move this piece of junk on this side. <laughs> this wheelbarrow looks better next to this old office chair. I need my leather jacket for yard work. <laughs> I'll just dump this grain of sand over here. This looks good. <laughs> I meant to do this last week. This piece of dirt obviously belongs up on this thing. I told Wenda to get me a new wheelbarrow. It's not cutting the mustard. What am I supposed to do? Tip it over and I guess drag I'll just, it? <laughs> no, it's not going to work. <laughs> this guy obviously has never, ever it's moved just, a wheelbarrow in his life. It's like he's hiding evidence. What is he doing? He's dancing with it. How many times can he spin it around? Okay, let's try this one more time. We're going to come out from the other side of the porch. I think he might be on drugs. There he is. Let's come back out. He's like, yeah. He gave up the wheelbarrow. Is he going to go for the office chair now? This office chair obviously needs to be moved a few inches. I think you should turn it's this happening. This way. I can tell. Oh, I'm going to like it so much better down like this. Just let it drop. <laughs> He's drunk. He Spin it around. Spin the wheels. There's mud in there. Let's make sure that this is functioning properly for outside <laughs> use. Mm, this looks a bit like it needs some, uh, some sprucing up. Yeah, I might be on some kind of drugs. Ah, uh, I'm so glad I moved it like this. This <laughs> makes so much more sense on its front. <laughs> it's funny. Well, I'll get to that after dinner. <laughs> I'm <some> hungry. <laughs> like something just happened in this drug What brain. the it's hell like, is going on? Uh, I've awesome. never seen so much random activity. activity? I just feel like no would, purpose dude, at I all. I feel like he's a paid extra to just like go look busy outside. Yeah. Like, he's like a crisis over. actor, except it's yard work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot my dog needs to be outside. Oh, I should probably have my. It's been a while I've been working on this chair. Let's go. Let's go look at this yellow container for a while and see if it needs to be put on its side. I think he's like on Adderall with or weed or something. or something. Yeah, let's try it again. Ooh, I like what the. I, what I was I doing here? Why did he move? Let's go for a walk, dude. He literally, he literally flipped that chair over and then just walked away, <laughs> scanned the bottom of it, spun it around, and then just left. Let, let yeah. his dog out, and now he's walking to the other side of the house. Before he had the wheelbarrow, he was like dancing with it, like spinning it around. <laughs> he actually like like tried to 
like what you would do if you had a full and there was like nothing trying, in there's it. There's nothing in it. He just did that and nothing came out. And of then it. he spun it around, pulled it up, spun it back around, and then just like it looked like you. Oh, here he comes again. Oh, he's got a bottle. That was a different guy. That was Is a girl? that his girl? Maybe. Honey, where'd you go? We were Honey, making, we we're making tostita pizza rolls. Honey, you're, you're not getting a lot done out here. Oh, I'll take this. Thank you. <laughs> I've been working very hard. It's my bottle of indiscriminate. Ah, uh, such a hard, long day of spinning chairs around. <laughs> I think it's some interesting neighbors. Okay, let's go. 